Good afternoon. Welcome to Changdong English Ministry 2 p.m. service. I welcome every one of you. Um, please all stand and join me in greeting. The Lord is with you. And join me in call to worship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Though an army can encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. One thing we asked of the Lord that we seek after. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to be fully planted in God's holy family. Amen. The hymn of praise is a hymn of promise. Hymn number 707. seated. Let's pray. Oh God, we gather here to worship you. We give thanks and praise to you. Please come and fill this place with the Holy Spirit. You spoke your word and revealed your good news in Jesus the Christ. Fill us and all creation with that word again so that by proclaiming your joyful promises to all nations and singing of your glorious hope to all peoples, we may become one living body, the church, deeply rooted in you, the rock of our salvation. Amen. Let's confess our faith in unison. We believe in God, the creator of all that we see and all that we do not see. We believe in Jesus Christ, God becomes flesh, in death, the forgiver of sinners, in rising, the healer of the broken. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God within us, comforter, strengthener, and friend. Let's sing hymn of devotion, We Are the Church, 
in number 558. Prayer for illumination. Prepare our hearts, O Lord, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from Psalm 92, verses 12 to 15. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. The word of life. going to be reading from the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, and you are invited to stand, if able. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he had to get into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depths of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since there was no root, they withered away. 
Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for beautiful singing. Um, Today, I'm here to introduce a preacher today. It's Reverend James Lee. Uh, As many of you know, he is the uh, second son of Reverend Lee. And Reverend James Lee is currently lead pastor in uh, Wesley United Methodist Church in uh, South Plainfield, New Jersey. Um, It is our blessing to have him here and hear his sermon today. So please welcome uh, Reverend James Lee. Good afternoon, Changdong English Ministry. It's been uh, seven years. (laughs) Someone's waving hello. Uh, It's been seven years since I've been to Korea. And I got to say, I received the warmest welcome I have ever received this time around. Uh, I got off the plane. I was on my way to my parents' home. And I saw my name plastered everywhere. For those of you who don't know, my Korean name is Lee Chae-myung. 
I just found out that one of your presidential candidates uh, has a very, very nice name. Uh, if you were anticipating Mr. Lee Jae Myung here today, I'm sorry to disappoint. Uh, I am Jae Myung, James Lee, as I was just introduced. I'm the second son of uh, Reverend Dr. Se Hyung Lee, and words cannot describe the honor and the privilege I have to speak from this pulpit today. Back in 1997, when the English ministry of this church first started, I was but a child, and I remember the services were in the Bethel Chapel, and my brothers and I, we sat in the back pew, squirming because we had to stay for another worship service on Sunday. Um, I attended the children's ministry here at Chengdong, and since then we've moved back to the United States, but every time we would visit Korea, this was home. Uh, Ten years ago, I was actually married uh, to my wife, Julie, in this very sanctuary. A few years later, uh, my brother Josh was married here, and yesterday, uh, the reason why I came to visit was to attend my older brother John's wedding to Yedam uh, in this very, very church. There's something special about the church, is there not? But I think it's important for, uh, for all of us to ask the question, what is exactly the church? You know, back in 2019, the church uh, was a word that more often than not referred to a physical location, a building, brick and mortar. But in the past two years, the word church went through quite a transformation. And today I'm here to suggest that actually we are in desperate need of yet another reformation of that term, church. Today I'll be preaching on the title, Planted in the House of the Lord. Uh, will you please join me in prayer before we begin? Let us pray. Almighty God, I give you thanks for this holy gathering. I am an unworthy vessel, but your word is true, so may you speak. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the beginning of the year 2020, churches throughout the world saw a huge spike in worship attendance. Why? Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, one country after another went into lockdown and churches were forced to go online, meaning two things. One, churches went from being a location that you go to, to now an experience that you'd attend anywhere at any time. And number two, it meant that it was now easier than ever before to go to church. I still remember the United States, we went into lockdown in the middle of March. And that Sunday morning on March 20, uh, 22nd, the internet crashed because Google and Facebook could not handle the amount of folks that were trying to go to church. It was actually quite a testimony to the, the people who were trying to attend worship. And for the months to follow, I attended all kinds of churches. Because you see, one thing about pastors is that we do not get to attend other churches as often as we like. So this was my opportunity. I said, I'm going to go visit all the churches I can. And boy, I did. Uh, early in the morning, I would attend a calm and peaceful Episcopalian church. And then in the afternoon, I would go full Pentecostal with the, all the bands and all the choirs and start dancing uh, in my living room. Uh, I was probably going to an average of four churches per Sunday. Church went from being a location to an experience. And gosh, I was going to church. And if God's highest calling for us as followers of Jesus Christ was to go to church, then I should have been the most blessed, the most spiritually mature, and one of the most Christian human beings on the face of this earth. But do you know what happened? By week five, I began to compare churches. You know, this church has a killer drummer. But that church has a full-string orchestra. That church has a, an amazing choir. When they sing, it just fills my soul. But that church has worship at the perfect time that fits my schedule. That pastor 
when he preaches, boy, I get inspired. But then there's this other pastor, when she preaches, I'm convicted and challenged. She's not afraid to go into those topics that other pastors are afraid to go. Over time, complaints start to grow in my heart. I didn't like the way that this church only had men in their service. Where are the women? Or I didn't like the way how one church didn't balance their audio correctly. I had to turn the volume down on my computer all the way down during the music and then turn it all the way up during the sermon. Some of you know what I'm talking about. My heart was filled with discontent. I started to see the ways in which even our own church was uh, not good enough in this way or that. I started to find myself saying, you know, my spiritual needs aren't being met here or there. There must be something wrong with this church or that church. You see what's going on here. I was going to church. I had become a spiritual consumer, and it was ruining my spiritual life. I was looking for that perfect church that would meet my needs, and I'm doomed to hop from church to church to church. And again, during this pandemic, it has become easier than ever before to go to church. Uh, one Sunday morning in May, I was slouched over, sitting on my couch in my pajamas, morning coffee in hand, uh, flipping through church after church on Facebook and YouTube, and I was just not satisfied with what I was hearing and seeing that particular Sunday. My spiritual needs weren't being met. I was a little upset. And right at that moment, my dad video calls me from Korea. He caught me mid-pout. And right in the middle of my couch potato spiritual consumerism, and he asked me, what was the matter? And I explained to him, Dad, these churches, they're just not doing it for me today. Something's wrong here. And we talked for a while, and he told me something that I was not expecting to hear. And it's the very same thing that I'm going to tell some of you today. He said, Reverend James Lee. Now, whenever my dad says Reverend James Lee, you know, something's up, right? <laughs> he said, Reverend James Lee, maybe you need to stop going to church. Because what my dad wanted me to see was the very same thing that some of you need to see God's highest calling for you as a follower of Christ was never to go to a church. God's highest calling for us isn't to go to a destination, but to be conformed in the image of Christ. Not to go to church, but to be the church. Specifically today, I want to highlight that the church is not a location. A church is not an experience. It is something in which to plant our identity to be planted in the house of the Lord, then sent out into the world. Now, where does this language come from? Uh, today, we read from the Old Testament reading from the 92nd Psalm, verses 12 through 15. And this is how verse 12 starts. Um, can we read this together? Ready, go. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. We're going to grow like a palm tree, it says, and then like a cedar, and we're going to flourish. Now, I always thought flourish was a strange word, right? It isn't a word that we use a lot in everyday language. At least I don't. Right? If you come up to me and say, hey, James, how are you doing? I'm not going to say, well, actually, I'm flourishing. You know, uh, imagine, I just imagine going up to someone at the gym and saying, hey, bro, man, you got some gains? Hey, man, you're so flourishing. Uh, that's not what we typically say, and if you did, you might not have a workout partner when you're done. But you know, flourishing isn't a word that we often use, but it's really a great image of what happens when you're planted, right? What does flourishing mean? It means growing. It means thriving. It means prospering. So then the psalmist compares it to two, two trees, like the, like the palm and the cedar. So cedars uh, were known for their durability. They were known for their beauty. And they were known for their pleasant aroma. 
For example, when Solomon built uh, the temple, he made the columns and the posts and the beams of the roof out of cedar because this temple was meant not only to be beautiful, but also to last for centuries, right? So we're being compared to flourishing like a cedar that's durable, that's lasting, that's beautiful and pleasant to be around, to have a pleasant aroma, right? And then we're compared to the palm. Now, uh, the palm branch was always symbolic of triumph and victory. We're flourishing, we're triumphant, and we're victorious. Right? In the Corinthian Olympic Games, uh, whenever someone would win the games, they would be presented with a palm branch. Right? This meant you're the champion, you're victorious, here's the gold medal. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, it was known as the triumphal entry, we say. Here comes the king, the victorious one, and so they waved palm branches as they welcomed Jesus. Right? The righteous will flourish. How are you doing? I'm flourishing. I'm growing. I'm blessed. I'm strong. I'm stable. I'm pleasing to be around. Both trees are evergreens all year long. There's life. There's strength. There's victory. There's fruit. How are you doing? I'm flourishing. I'm blessed. I'm prosperous. I'm growing. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And who will flourish? Let's look at verse 13. Let's read this together. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Scripture does not say those who go to church will flourish, but rather those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of God. I love this imagery. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they're flourishing. They're blessed. They're prospering. They're connected. They're emotionally engaged. They're making a difference. They're fulfilled. They are flourishing. Now, unfortunately, many of you would not use the word flourishing. Instead, say, instead of saying, I'm spiritually flourishing, you might be saying, honestly, James, I'm spiritually dry. Right? Instead of saying, I'm thriving emotionally, some would say, I'm emotionally withering during this pandemic. Instead of saying, I'm connection, uh, connected relationally, some would say, I'm relationally barren. Instead of saying, I'm fulfilled spiritually, making a difference, full of joy, so many people say, I'm still searching. I'm reaching, longing for, hoping for that thing, that hit, that something, that buzz, that relationship, that job, that whatever it is that I don't have that would fulfill what I'm missing on the inside. I go to church, but I'm not flourishing. It says those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. Now, what do we need to recognize we need to recognize that your life is a seed. Your life is a seed. Now, what does that mean? A seed has tremendous potential. A seed has the potential to grow, to thrive, to multiply, to produce much fruit, to be a blessing to many. But a seed that is not planted lies dormant, unproductive, unfruitful, dissatisfied. Your life is a seed. Jesus told a powerful parable in Matthew's gospel, the 13th chapter. A farmer goes out to sow some seeds and he throws seeds out and some of the seed fell on a path on hard ground. And si since that seed couldn't take root, birds came along and ate it all up. The seed, that seed never reached its potential. Now some seed fell in soil but it was shallow, and so it spurted up, but the roots never grew deep. And so when the sun beams down, it withers up and dies. Some start to grow, but then some other plants with thorns choke out the life of that little emerging plant. And Jesus says that this is like the worries and the concerns of this life. Do you see this metaphor? Some people, they have potential, but that potential lies dormant. Some start to grow, but then they fade away. 
some start to thrive spiritually, but the worries and the concerns and the bills and the struggles of life choke out the spiritual growth. But then, Jesus said, a seed that falls on good soil, it multiplies 30 times, 60 times, 100 times. That one seed becomes a massive blessing because it was planted in good soil. Who is it that flourishes? Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. A seed can only grow if it is planted. We need to stop going to church and be planted in the house of the Lord. Now, what is the difference, Pastor James? How is going to church different from being planted in the house of the Lord? There is a real difference. And it, could, it shows up in, in our everyday language, how we talk. For example, some of you, if you go to church, uh, then here's probably what you might have said during this week. Hey, uh, are we going to go to church? Are we going to watch the church service today? You know, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I had a busy week. I think I deserve uh, a nap. You know, uh, in the States, you know, there's a lot of football games on Sunday. So it's like, ah, I'm going to probably want to watch the game. You know, I'm tired. You know, I, I really wanted to check out that restaurant. Can we just go to the restaurant? What do you like? Hey, kids, you know, this is, this is you know, parenting, the best parenting, right? Hey, kids, do you want to go to church today? All right? Should we go to church? When you're planted, this does not become a question we start asking. Are we going to go to church? Because church isn't a destination that you go to. It's not an experience that you attend. The church is the posture. It is who you are. We never ever say we're going to church because we are the church, right? We are worshiping God. This is a moving temple. It's no longer a destination to which we attend. It must be an identity inside of us. Just like I never ever say, hey kids, uh, should we eat today? Right? Are, are you in the mood for food? Right? Uh, uh, children, do you want to breathe oxygen today? Are you in the mood for oxygen? No, we don't do that. We recognize even in the Greek, uh, the Greek word translated as church has great meaning. The word in Greek is ekklesia. Can we all say ekklesia? Ekklesia, right? And this really has two meanings. Number one, it means a gathering or assembly. In other words, if you are listening to or watching this service, this sermon later online when it's convenient for you, that's great, that's amazing, that's really good. And I recommend that you do that. I think that's a great thing. But it's not the same as being planted in the house of the Lord in the same way that, you know, as a father, I have three children. Uh, I don't want my relationship with my children to only be through voicemail right? I don't want them to just be listening to my words, and that's it. What is my desire? I love it. I am so eager to go back home and, and have dinner with my kids, right? To gather together, to assemble together. Why? Because we are a family. We are one, right? The church, ecclesia, is a gathering. It is an assembly. It is where relationship flourishes. But the second meaning, the second uh, meaning of ecclesia uh, is this. Ek means out, and klesia comes from the word kaleo, which means called. So it's literally the called out ones. In other words, we gather together to be unified. We gather together to honor our God. We gather together to corporately hear the word of God and celebrate what God has done in our lives. We gather together to use our gifts, but as we are strengthened, it's not just what happens inside a building, in the church building. It's, it's that we are the church, and so we are called out into the world. When we are planted, we're no longer spiritual consumers. The church does not exist for you. Let me say that again. The church does not exist for you because you are the church. Do you hear this difference? When we're followers of Christ, we must realize that we are the church and we exist for the world. At Wesley United Methodist Church, where I serve, we say this to our members. When you, if you want to become a member of this church, the church no longer is, exists for you. Why? Because now you are the church. 
you are the church and now you exist for the world. There's a massive difference between going to a building or watching a service online and being plugged into a calling, a movement, a mission. We are planted in the house of God. A while back, I was reading something fascinating about redwood trees. And you know, uh, redwood trees are the tallest living things on planet Earth. They can literally grow to be uh, 30 stories high, and they can be three stories wide. How in the world does a tree grow 30 stories high? I I I'll tell you how. First, they're planted. I mean, they are really, really planted. Their roots go deep. Their root system can go out 100 feet and up to 150 feet down parallel. And, you know, what happens is, you know, you got this one 30-story tree over here, and then over there there's another 30-story tree. And what happens underground where nobody sees, the roots begin to intertwine and support each other so that the trees can even grow further and further and thrive, planted together. I can't tell you what our church family meant for us during this pandemic. This has been the hardest time to be alive for many of us. Having to learn, relearn what it means to greet people. Those of us in church ministry, we had to figure out what, it, we had to ask ourselves, what, it, what, it, what is the church exactly? All over again. It was... Uh, these past two years have been more tears, more confusion than ever before. How did we make it through? Our roots were being supported by the church's roots. The love and care I received from fellow members of the body of Christ. We need each other. Your roots grow deep when you're planted in the house of the Lord. Now, you might be saying, you know, Pastor James, I tried. You know, I, went to, I came to church like three weeks. It's awkward. I'm not, I'm not going to do this. You know, a tree takes a long time to grow. Amen? It takes time. Amen? Amen. A tree takes time to grow. Now, when is the best time to plant a church? Uh, sorry, excuse me. When is the best time to plant a tree? When is the best time to plant a tree? Anyone? 20 years ago. <laughs> if you wanted a tree, you should have planted it 20 years ago. Now, when's the next best time? It's now. To plant the tree now. Now is the time to plant yourself in a local church because God wants you to flourish like an evergreen, stable, strong cedar, or the victorious, triumphant palm. Only those who are planted in the house of the Lord are those who truly flourish in all that God has for you. Now, Chengdong First Methodist Church is a very special church. It's a ministry without borders, a ministry beyond walls, a mission hub in the center of Seoul where uh, many of you call your home church. There are many of you that this is a pit stop along your faith journey. Wherever you are in your faith, I invite you to ask yourself this week, what is one thing that I can do? What is one thing God is calling me into in order to stop just going to church, but to do something better and be planted in the house of the Lord. Maybe that looks like joining a small group, a Bible study, a community group where you can grow together in your faith. Maybe uh, it's joining the beautiful Shalom Choir uh, or, or some of the music that happens here in this church. Maybe it's to serve through the church's various mission opportunities in our community. Whatever it is, what is one thing God is calling you to do, to be planted in a local church, to be nourished for life's journey, to be embraced by the love of God and empowered and called out to serve the world. Beloved, it is time to stop being a spiritual consumer and be planted as a spiritual consumer because God has so much for you. God wants you to flourish. How are you doing? I'm flourishing. I'm thriving. Life's not perfect, but my roots are deep. My faith is strong. My siblings in Christ are praying for me. I am needed and I am loved. I'm a part of something. I don't go to church. I am the church. I am a messenger of Christ's love and hope in this increasingly divided and hurting world. I assemble and then I go out strengthened, planted in the house 
of the Lord. My deepest prayer is that when the time comes that I can come back and visit yet again and see our Chengdong church family in the future, and I get to ask you, how are you doing? I pray that all of you will be able to say, Pastor James, I'm flourishing. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, I thank you for this assembly, this gathering of fellow believers, members of the body of Christ. Lord, life's not perfect. Life has been quite hard these past few years. But Lord, we thank you for your love that never fails. We thank you that we get to assemble and be empowered and encouraged and that we can experience healing and then, Lord, we can be sent out into the world to share your love. Lord, we long to be a cedar. We long to be a palm that we might declare to the world that in Christ there is life and life to the full. Lord, we long to flourish in your name. Here we are, Lord. Take us. Have your way that we may be your children, your people, your evergreen trees. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise as you're able to for the singing of the Lord's Prayer. It's time for our koinonia, so please turn around to somebody and just greet them. Say to them, the Lord is with you. Peace of the Lord is with you. Okay, thank you. You may be seated. A warm word of welcome to each and every one of you. We are so glad that you came to church on this very cold. Last week it was spring. And we're back to winter, but we're going to get there. Spring is one of these days. So welcome to each and every one of you. You that are joining us on uh, YouTube, also a warm word of welcome to each and every one. A special word of welcome uh, to uh, Reverend uh, Hesson Kim that was absent uh, she actually only went to America for a short while, and that became a long while. Uh, so we are glad to have you with us again. And with her, uh, we want to welcome Reverend Son Heikian. Uh, I hope I pronounced it right. Welcome with us. We're so glad that you are here. Yeah, please stand. And of course, um, Reverend James and Reverend Josh, we welcome you again. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, we are plotting uh, behind their backs to keep them here, but they don't want to 
listen to that. We actually want to have them here with us permanently, but what, what shall we do? They have to go back. So it was really good to have them here. Thank you, Reverend James. Just a few announcements. Um, we are busy with Revelation during our Cat's Table Talks. So if you still want to join, you're welcome. And um, yeah, every Sunday at 12.30, you're welcome to join us. And then also we have started a, a vacation Bible school yesterday. It's for two Saturdays. And so next Saturday uh, is the last of the vacation winter Bible school. So if you want to join, just talk to one of our staff members. They can tell you how to do that. And um, it's quite, quite fun and it's wonderful. Also, next Sunday, it's time again for our um, book concert. So you've got a, a yellow leaflet. Please check it out and join there at 3.30 next Sunday. Right, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Our gracious and our loving God, in the morning when we rise and in the evening when we lie down and all the moments of our day in between, we believe you are with us and that you love us. We thank you, God, for your eternal presence, your gracious care that follows us throughout all our lives. We especially thank you for your steadfast love, which always embraces us and walks with us. Grant us the strength in this time to hold on and to believe, even when the way seems unclear, and even when our circumstances seems com seem confusing and overwhelming. Like James and Peter and John, help us to climb onto the mountain to experience you in all your majesty and glory, and then to come down from the mountain to live out our lives with faith and care and compassion and service and love. We pray today for those who are ill and grieving, for those who are frightened and discouraged, for those who are weary and tired. Touch each one of these with your healing power and boost them with your infusion of hope. Bless as well the caregivers, the loved ones and friends who reach out to them with help, encouragement and support. Help us to be people planted deep with deep roots so that we can grow high and that we can be the church as we've heard. So God, be with us as we seek to be your community, your church, where we all are welcomed and we all are valued and we are all celebrated. And Lord, we pray for each and every one in our congregation and those who are tuned in. You, you know their needs and you know how to meet their needs. So we pray for those. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a good God. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's time for the offering, so please rise if you're able to for this offering song. God, we come to you again and we thank you for all your blessings. And we thank you for these gifts and these offerings. We pray that you will bless it. We pray that we will use it to glorify your name and extend your kingdom. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Closing hymn.
hymn number 593. Now receive the blessing. Go forth, children of the Most High God, recipients of the greatest love this world has ever known, rooted in the house of the Lord, flourishing like the cedars and the palm, filled with life and joy and peace. Now go forth and share the good news of great joy that life to the full is available here and now to our neighbors and to the world. In the name of the one who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, amen and amen. Amen.